What's up, guys, and welcome back to another episode on the Mid Pouring Podcast. And today we're basically gonna dive into some, you know, studying stuff because most of the stuff we've been talking about has been outside of studying. So we want to talk a little bit about studying, and in this part, we want to talk about, you know, flashcards and methods of studying. First thing we want to talk about is Anki versus Quizlet. Hmm. So just to give you guys some background, I'm sure some of you, most of you guys know, but Anki is basically used by medic- many medical students. It's kind of like its own thing. It's like Quizlet, but I think of it as I think of Anki as like a Ferrari and Quizlet as like um, um, BMW M4 BMW, BMW BM, yeah, something like, it's like that. It's fast, but it's not like as powerful mm-hmm. or as um, as free. We could yeah. say. Because, yeah, because I think, well, every time I look at Quizlet versus Anki, I always think of also Quizlet is like childish, like, because when you look at Anki, it's like bare bones. It's only one purpose, just flashcards. But Quizlet, you know, there's other stuff that some people can find great. Some people don't. But me personally, uh, and I'll just start off first, like the debate on that, too. But me personally, Anki has been so much more better than Quizlet. Not only that it's just, you know, bare bones, I'm just pressing the space bar to see um, like the term and definition. They also got, I mean, other stuff too, like closed deletion, image occlusion, so it helps with anatomy and all those stuff. But another reason why I love Anki is that it has a background for medical students. It has a background in medicine, while Quizlet... I still think Quizlet is very great as a resource, but when I'm comparing the two, I'd always go Anki over Quizlet. But what do you think? Yeah, I mean, I love both of them. And I think, if I'm not mistaken, I think you're maybe overshooting the boundary of it's made for medicine. I think it was originally made for learning a new language, Anki. Because Anki in Japanese means to memorize. So I think the founder originally made it for language and he just had the image occlusion and just the regular front and back. But yeah, I agree with the Ferrari ter- terminology or analogy because it's super powerful. It has it has amazing um, algorithms for its space repetition and um, this active recall. And it just has much better free options than a uh, Quizlet. And um, at the time of this recording, I believe Quizlet is now is still working on their space repetition algorithm. Mm. And also they're including AI now, but it gets pricey. Like you have to upgrade and upgrade and yeah. upgrade. But Anki is free. Anki is free on your mobile and um, some. Yeah. Oh, no, oh, not no, mobile. No, no. On desktop. desktop. Yeah, yeah, your desktop or your laptop. But I think for your iPad or your iPhone, it's a one-time $25 purchase. Yeah, but that's, which, that's so much better than Quizlet, like 10 bucks, 50 uh, bucks a month. A month and it's renewing, yeah. But um, I feel like it's... What I love about Quizlet is that it's more widely used and you have this long and wide database um, of a lot of students who have taken that class previously and it's really easy to search up. Yeah. I feel like in, in Anki you can't get really specific because I tried to search up like, and plus not a lot of people use Anki. So you don't have that big database for your other classes. It's strictly just medicine and language is what I really saw on the Anki web. And also a little plugin. If you want to use Anki, but you don't know how we have a tutorial on our channel, uh, go check that out. Great tutorial. But uh, to just kind of wrap up here, I like Quizlet because it is it has a large database. It's a lot of people use it. You can find your classes easier, and um, it is simple. And yeah, that's basically it. But if you want to add your images, if you want to do like um, all their AI stuff now, and if you want to upgrade, it's pretty pricey. Yeah. What I love about Anki is that it's free. It's super powerful alg- uh, algorithm. It's easy to customize, and um, it is it is very powerful and you can roll through a bunch of these bunch of these questions in your flashcards but i feel like it does take a lot of time to that's why i don't even do flashcards at this just point. about to say yeah, it makes I, a I lot of time it takes a lot of time yeah. to create them if you and it's very hard like i said to find them pre-made so sometimes i just i don't use anki or quizlet and uh, what do you do well i personally just um just blurt like first off i what what my 
process is, is I go through the textbook or the professor's slides and I try to understand the concept and I take notes as minimally as possible. It's like, um, for example, I was doing notes over the lecture 14, the lecture 13, 14 for cell bio, which is basically like cell respiration and stuff. And with the like glycolysis stuff, I mean, you just write the graph, you just write the arrows and then I already know that, oh, it's hexa, hexa, hexokinase. That's that first enzyme that converts the glucose into um gluco one or gluco six uh something yeah uh, yeah six it just it's breaks it into the well, it doesn't really break it yet but it's six g six p that's it mm. but i don't know the full name yeah <laughs> and it's um and then the phosphofructokinase is the one that regulates the whole uh one of the most important enzyme that regulates the process through feedback inhibition which is a bunch of other stuff but i was just moving like arrows around and doing this doing that or um for a uh, redox potential if there's a positive redox potential and electrons will go towards it so i just did positive redox potential and then equals high electron affinity like i just try to make it as bare and as easy as possible and then once i do, do, do we that, have that huh do we have to know that was it on the slides yeah oh damn it it was right. on um <laughs> like lecture 14 it was talking about the redox reactions with the electron transport chain oh that's like the last towards the end yeah, or yeah, the toward, one maybe. Or think, uh, I don't know, I already forgot. But. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there's a lot to study for that one. But um, once I do that, I just blurt. So I look back at my notes and I look at it for 10 seconds, close it and write everything I can. I keep doing that until it just goes into memory. It's like the easiest thing you could do because you already done notes and, you know, making flashcards takes so much time. So why don't I just look at the paper, close it, write everything you can and just go about it from memory, build that photographic memory. Um, another thing that I do is I take my professor's slides or piece of a textbook, put into AI, and then the AI just makes some multiple choice questions for me. But that's pretty much my process. Hmm. Yeah, me, I'm kind of a, um, what, what should I say? I have a diverse portfolio, you could say. I like to take snippets of the best because I, I know you see a lot of influencers and people on uh, social media say that this is the best studying method. Don't do this. Don't do that. Yeah. Honestly, it's all up to you. That's what I figured out at the end of the day. I tried so many ones. And what I've kind of finalized at the end of the day is I like to take snippets of the best study methods. So mm. um, I like to do like this, like you. I like to start off with what you do. And I take a general overview just to see what I'm kind of working with. And that's kind of called priming. I usually do that before the night before too. I kind of just take a take a gander at my slides, um, and then I kind of go into a note taking slash mind mapping. I like to do a little bit mind mapping on uh, OneNote or Canvas, and um, I like to use more illustrations nowadays and drawings, especially with these um, the Krebs cycle and glycolysis. There's a lot of arrows, and so I kind of like to do drawings and connect them, and then I like to take like um, a 10 minute break after I like I learned glycolysis for example today and I took a break and then I moved over to Krebs and in those times I kind of blurt uh, just a little bit on a piece of paper I don't, I don't really blurt as much but I want to start getting into it and then I kind of just wrap it up with some flashcards and some active recall and I do a little bit of more blurting at the end of the night and just see like what I'm missing and then Anything that I'm missing and anything I still don't understand, I just go to a third-party resource. I watch my Porium videos. I watch my own videos. I watch Jahangir's videos. And then I kind of, I watch the Organic Chemistry Tutor videos and I just put all of them together. I piece them. And then um, I used to do this. I used to just, you know, pull these crazy all-nighters. But now, now I've been slowly just starting to get into like, you know, you know what? I already know it. And at the end of the day, I liked learning it. I'm not really stressed out about the letter letter grade because I enjoyed studying it. I was really intrigued today about action potential and all that fun stuff we learned uh, regarding the cells. And then so I just I'm getting better at just going to bed at that point. It's just like I have it in I have it stored. It's it's too much. To yeah, just pile you just on. you just accept the fact that you've studied enough. There's yeah. nothing more you could do, There's and you just you can do. have just go the to bed. That, yeah. You literally that's one thing that I had to develop for quite some time is the confidence to actually tell myself that hey 
I mm, studied enough yeah. and I know I could perform well in the That's exam. That's what I was lacking, the confidence factor. Because I was just, I thought to myself, oh, damn it, you know, I have to pull this all nighter. And, and then I'm, and then if, especially those, our classes are in the morning too. So yeah. I don't have time to even recuperate. And there's this bunch of podcasts that talk about how it's um, good to just sleep. Sleep is so important to actually memorize and yeah but you know sometimes here and there i'll still pull there's there's actually this one study it was so they basically had two groups and they're looking at sleep and how it helps with cognition so the first group out of this experiment they well both groups were given a math problem and there was a secret way of solving the math problem it was a very secret way easy way to solve the math problem like a shortcut to solve the math problem Mm. and they gave one group 12 hours, but that was throughout the day. So like 8 a.m. to 8 p.m. So the, they had the whole entire day and they gave the other group the same 12 hours, six hours of which was in the day. And then they had a full night's rest and the other six hours were after they woke up. So what they found was, which is actually intriguing, the group that had the overnight sleep was twice as faster to find the easy way to solve the problem mm. so they're tw- they're two times faster at finding that secret way and i mean if you guys don't know if you don't sleep if you don't sleep enough you're actually uh, killing yourself because they've found that in many studies uh, mortality actually increases the less frequently you sleep the less hours, if it's not a constant amount of hours. And um, another important thing about sleep is that it's best if you sleep, if you sleep and wake up at the same time, versus if you maybe like one day sleep eight hours, then nine hours, then six hours, it's always best to keep that time constant. Yeah, (laughs) because you want to build because your circadian rhythm is just such a balance. So you never want to break that balance. Yeah, yeah, especially even in the morning too, like got to get that sunlight, got to get that vitamin D ASAP. Um, but then, you know, it's crazy because I'm a big fan of, uh, of like rap music and rock music, but mostly rap. But actually, I like all types of music, but mostly I listen to rap. And a lot of my favorite rappers like Nas, Currency, um, just like ESTG, just these hustle rappers, these trappers, we could say, who make trap music and Future too. I love Future. Um, but I can't understand a word he says. Th- no, it's a second second language. You really have to sit there and understand. Pluto. <laughs> but, but anyway, <laughs> that's the only thing I know. Anyway, I listen to all their rap songs and I just I love their lyrics. But they always say, okay, for example, Nas, um, he says, "I never sleep because sleep is the cousin of death." And then Currency says, I got no time to sleep. I take naps in between my flights. And then Future says, mm, I forgot what Future says. And then Vince Staple says, I can't be sleepy when I'm living these people's dreams. Exactly. So I like I listen to that at like, you know, the late hours of the night. And I'm just, it. it's like, it hits me like caffeine. And I'm just going again and again and again. And I, you know, I always see these um hustlers like Elon Gatsi and even Elon Musk I mean he said that like I love sleep sleep is important and I he's like I just now found the time to sleep nowadays and Alex Hormozzi too he he was talking about or he's big on sleep but at the time he had this little snippet on his uh Instagram shorts or YouTube shorts but he what he said was he's like I wasn't you know getting now eight to nine hours of sleep whenever I was in the grind set hustle set and um, he's like, J- I just now, you know, prioritize sleep with, my, you know, with his little nose strips and everything. But I feel like if you work with both of them, mix the grind set and the health set, we could say. And I feel like that's the most important thing is just balance, homeostasis. You can't have too much of both. But then I, I disagree because that whole grind set thing of you know Nas currency talking about even Alex Ramosi but they were in back in the day when they were hustling like Nas was like not was 90s 2000s rapper yeah 
Made mainly yeah. that he was hustling at that time. You know how much technology has evolved and the opportunities that we have now? They don't mm. have that. They didn't have that back then. They didn't have access to the internet, access to knowledge in the fingertips of their uh, palm. Like we're given every single opportunity we have. So we don't have to be in this grind set, hustle for money at night type life. Like we don't have to do that mm. because we have everything in our fingertips. All we have to do, which I think this is the biggest um my the biggest barrier of our generation is that we don't take action we never take action and we're not grateful for all the opportunities that we have like i'm telling like it's just always crazy to me that in like with my fingers i could just put a couple of letters in the in the web and i could figure out some interesting facts mm. i could figure out like when napoleon first rose to power in like 2 seconds i could figure out what happened in world history? How that even happened? You don't even have to type nowadays. Yeah, you, just you tell Siri or chat uh, the voice. They don't even have that. They didn't even have Instagram Reels where you could actually build a very profitable business making all these content, like content like this. They didn't have stuff like this. They didn't have what we're doing right now. So that's why I disagree with the all grind set stuff because we're in the age of generation where we don't have to hustle for money at night, where we have all the opportunities now. We don't have to do it anymore. Yeah, that's why I said balance. <laughs> no, but I think. Grind well, but my my whole argument is that doing that whole um, grind set stuff, like, well, I, I'm personally just saying this comes from you know science and stuff, and my understanding of sleep is that I think it's very detrimental to do that. But this is just me like talking to myself. I wouldn't do that because, and I don't want to give any medical advice or anything, but I am i wouldn't do that because it would be detrimental to my health. Because if I'm, you know, trying to uh, grind set at like till 11 or till 1 a.m., then I'll be, if I want to get good night's sleep, then I'll have to wake up at like 8 nine and even if i don't i'm gonna wake up at maybe like 6 a.m five hours of sleep i personally can't do that i know my body can't do that because i've read the literature and everything or uh, barely read anything <laughs> just watched a lot of podcast snippets but i need that eight hours because i know my body needs it that's why that's mm. my defense okay yeah no it makes it makes total sense like with the what you're saying about action taking action and even there's this uh Chinese proverb, I think it was by Confucius. Well, he said, um, the thinking about lifting the barrel or thinking about lifting the heavy wheelbarrow is harder than actually lifting the wheelbarrow. Yeah, that's that's the thing. I think we should apply that to our chem labs <laughs> slowly but surely. But anyway, so so you're telling me if let's say let's let's take a step back. It's mm -hmm. the 90s. Oh, it's the, the 90s. And yeah, I would say. No, 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 no. But let's say, okay, let's say it's the 90s and Nas had a um, had an iPhone with him, uh, an iPhone 14 with him. Let's say he had an iPhone 14 with him in the 90s. Okay. And, well, let's say the iPhone 14 was already in the 90s. Okay. We, you have everything that's in the 90s except the only difference is you have the phones. And, okay, let's say he's in, uh, he's in the streets of New York hustling. I feel like he still, I feel like he still would be. I'm so confused. Well, no, your, your, your argument was that the reason that they emphasize this grind set is because they didn't have access, you know, to content and technology. Let's say it was the nineties. He has the same financial situations. Um, I guess it also depends on his environment too. You got to consider that. But then you're saying that all the technology that we have in this generation goes to the 90s then what defines the 90s if all the technology in this generation that's a whole there? new podcast um, yeah i'm so confused well i'm just saying that that's what me personally like i because you're saying that you get motivated by that i'm saying that i wouldn't get motivated mm, by that that makes sense yeah. Well, yeah that's a whole new podcast but what what would you say to like these people who don't want to live to be you know 80 plus and for example there's a couple of these instagram gurus you know they're they're wealthy they're set mm -hmm. and they're grind set you know four or five hours of sleep and their main motto is live fast die young well, i guess there is no argument there's no argument because that's what they want that's what yeah. you want i mean i can't really control yeah never mind yeah bro was trying to create another scenario that goes to his body well, i wanted to keep the podcast rolling a bit but no but i mean 
that's yeah that's what i'm just saying like i just i don't i don't find the motivation from you know working at night that whole i you know sometimes i will i'll have the motivation and i'll feel like i'm like the only one in the universe that's actually studying that i actually you know <laughs> i've never seen him past 11 oh yeah that's true he, he's not wrong that's actually true <laughs> but i you know sometimes studying at night is the vibe though yeah yeah i feel you because it's like well how i think of it i'm like the only person in the universe that's actually studying and especially I'm s- since the winter's coming too. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Yeah. i'm just gonna be just hooded course, yeah. up over here i also kind of resonated with uh, conor mcgregor because he had this thing where he was like um i guess it's kind of but that's like athletes though yeah but athletes i feel like an athlete would need to prioritize sleep way more than like you know a pre-med student even though like they both need to prioritize but i would feel like if i'm an athlete and all i have to do is train i would be on the strict regimen of sleep and diet but uh mcgregor he has this he has this little clip of he's sitting in his old dublin gym and he was talking about how you would never catch you would never catch him in the morning or in the afternoon at the gym mm. he used to always go when the lights were turned off all by himself at nighttime and he kind of saw himself as like a batman i would say and he said that is the most focused he's ever he ever is is at nighttime and um, i guess he would just catch up on sleep during the day but you know that that's messes up with circadian too yeah but then you got people like mcgregor so i kind of draw some inspiration from mcgregor whenever i'm kind of up at these late hours but i'm also working on finding my balance and making sure that i keep sleep um in in my hindsight i can't i used to push sleep back i used to see sleep as like oh you know i'm losing hours on the studying but in reality i already studied so just might as well sleep well that concludes episode four of the medporium podcast and um, i'll see you on the high tide i just blanked out i didn't say what i said oh a pomodoro they will make you a doctor someday see you guys in the next one